Hello and welcome to chapter 14 of The Gordian Knot. The Gordian Knot is a work of fantasy and any similarities to real events or people are purely coincidental. Chapter 14 is rather long, so I split it in two parts. Chapter 14, the beginning of the end, part one. The armchairs formed a loose circle around the lock of the table. Poppy, George and Dimitri occupied three of the armchairs. Valeri looked at the vacant armchair. He sat down, then placed his briefcase and laptop bag by the side of it. But he rested his walking stick by his side. Please begin, he said. You see, George began, only Dimitri and a handful of operatives that worked on certain ops with him would call you Mechka. And, correct me if I'm wrong, But by now we all know each other, at least by sight, George said. Lev is not part of that circle, but as we know now, Ivan heard the nickname from Dmitri and told Lev. I should say that Lev didn't know who Mechka was until you organized to meet up with us, George said. Valery slouched slightly in his armchair. I called Sedoy from my office and told him to pick you up at the airport. I should add that Lev works in our IT department. What does Nikolai do? Poppy asked. Nikolai? Why are you asking? Valeri said. Valeri, don't miss me around. The judo club picks. The frequency of images of Nikolai was 33% higher than the other members, Poppy stated. Nikolai's job is security, loosely speaking, Valeri admitted. George whistled. You still have those? I was reminded recently, Valeri began, that old habits die hard, was his simple reply. He killed Ivan, Dmitri declared. That's a heavy accusation. Have you got any proof? Valeri objected. None that we can openly provide to the police at the moment, George conceded. And he has diplomatic immunity. Poppy added. He still did it and should face justice, Dimitri grumbled. It is a difficult situation, George agreed. So instead we are waiting for him to try to kill you, George explained. Excuse me, Valeri said. He is outside. He has seen the dance take away Lev and the man you sent to Veliko Tanova and he knows you are in here talking to us, Poppy explained. He shot at us already, so I don't think he would be shy to shoot at you, George added. Why would he shoot at you? Valeri asked, struggling with George's story. It's to do with optics and contraband, but Dimitri can explain this better, George said. Dimitri leaned forward, forearms resting on his thighs. He crossed his hands. Ivan was working for the sausage maker. He rigged up the admin site for his import-export business, Ukrainian meat. Would turn Romanian and then Bulgarian, then Bulgarian meat would be marked for export to Ukraine and get rebates from the EU for exports to a non-EU country. But the sausage maker decided that profits from the operation could be maximized. So the meat transports carry meat as well as counterfeit goods, mainly cigarettes, designer clothes and accessories. Your scum got wind of it and started to use the operation to smuggle out Bulgarian manufactured military grade glass, Dimitri paused. Poppy has found enough proof to convince me that Ivan opened the door for them, he added with a heavy heart. Pray, my scum? Valeri asked. He means private military contractors, George explained. Not that one. He added quickly. The other one. They are working out of an office up in Bruce, the front is security consultants. It was a recruitment center though, but in light of recent events, they've branched out into export business, George said. And I am going to close them down, Dimitri stated. Valeri leaned back in the armchair. Do as you wish. It is a private company. If they have broken your laws, close them down. Valeria and Dimitri exchanged glances. I wish I knew 
For sure what those two have just agreed upon, George thought to himself. Dimitri resumed his storytelling. Ivan told me about the sausage maker operation only. I told him that I would get him out of it. That's when I set B-92 on the trail. I knew he wanted to take down the sausage maker. B-92 was sniffing around and had the roost depot and restaurant under round the clock surveillance, George said. The rest is conjecture, but we suspect that some people got nervous and got Ivan to lure B-92 into a trap. What has any of this to do with Nikolai? Valeria objected. I sent you a picture of Lev with a bunch of... Poppy paused, glanced over to George. Private security contractors. Poppy passed a brown folder to Valeri. But there is more, she said. Valeri opened the folder and examined the grainy prints. There was no mistaking Lev and Nikolai. All the open case containing sniper's rifles, scopes, ammunition, explosives and radios. The best I can do is to have them sent to Crimea instead of Moscow, he said eventually. Oh, I wouldn't do that, George said. Not when your beloved leader is going to go for a surprise visit to the peninsula in three weeks. How do you know, Valeri said, clearly startled because we found detailed information about the secret visit on Ivan's stick. And that case, those two are lovingly admiring the contents of, contains everything you need for assassination, George said. That visit is a closely guarded secret, Valeri said softly. So you will agree that it would be best if you could help us get Nikolai by, you know, get Nikolai to shoot at you. Your dear ambassador would then have to strip him of his immunity and we can always find some evidence of drug dealing or some such to lighten her conscience. Once the embassy protection is removed, we will move in with proof that he pushed Ivan off the bridge so that the Bulgarian justice system can take its course, George explained. I cannot promise anything, Valeri said, looking at more of the prints. He stopped. That's me, he said. Fascinating, isn't it? We have a video of you shooting B-92, George said. The angle is wrong, Dimitri objected. The bullet came from the left, from about 200 metres away. Sniper rifle. In the video, you're close to B-92 and you're using an RK-98 semi-automatic pistol, he said. How do you know? I thought your systems had been brought down by hackers, George said. Dimitri shook his head. I called my cousin at the lab. He worked on B-92 case, he explained. George beamed. Hackers have no chance against Dimitri and his infinite network of cousins, he said, which earned him an disapproving look from Dimitri. Anyway, Poppy began, this is a merge of three frozen frames from the videos. You can see that there is a third man in the picture. He is too close for a sniper, Valeri pointed out. Correct. It is one of Ivan's easter eggs or clues, George corrected himself. That sniper should not be in the frame at all. The fact that he is and we can make out some of his facial features means, think, that Ivan knew he was the real shooter, George concluded. Do you recognise him? Poppy asked. Valeri looked at the man hiding in the undergrowth. No, he said slowly. Valeri's phone buzzed. He looked at the number. Excuse me, he said. He stood up and walked a few steps away from where George and the others were sitting. Poppy pulled out her phone and began idly thumping at the screen. Valeri walked back. I'm afraid I have to go back to Sofia immediately, he said. He grabbed his walking stick. He stepped forward and turned around and picked up his briefcase and laptop. Poppy fished out a set of car keys from her bottomless bag. It's the one plastered with adverts for the car rental company. Bring it back when you're done, she said, placing the keys on the low coffee table. Thank you, Valeri said. He bent down and picked up the keys. George looked from Poppy to Valeri's bag as he walked away. What the hell is going on? he blurted out. Dimitri joined with an unrepeatable Bulgarian expression. 
then stood up. But I is angry. I wouldn't go anywhere near him right now, Poppy said. She glanced up from her phone screen. His wife and grandchild were hit by a car in Sofia, she explained. Dimitri sat back down. How do you know? I bugged his phone, of course, Poppy said. We can follow him in your car, she added. Because you bugged his phone? George asked. Yes and no. I bugged our car too and I slipped a note tag in his pocket, Poppy said, looking at her phone. Dimitri automatically started patting his own pockets. No, I didn't sleep in a tag in your pocket. The bloody things are very expensive on the black market. Not a consumer market air tag then. How did you get hold of one of those? George asked. We have another problem, Poppy said, cutting him short. The car is moving. The air tag is not, she said. Poppy grabbed the stick and stood up. It's not far. Do you think Nikolai got him? George asked, joining her side. How far is it? Dimitri asked. Not far, not far at all, Poppy said. In the second part of chapter 14, we follow George, Poppy and Dimitri as they go looking for Valeri, and we discovered what happened to Valeri's wife and grandchild. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be publishing the second part of chapter 14 next Tuesday. My next video will be my monthly snapshot of the mood in Russia and I will take a quick dive into President Putin's New Year's speech. Hope to see you then. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.